is different from when we read about sowing and reaping. The first fruit offering is different in that uh, the first fruit offering is tied to promises made by God. So in a sense, the first fruit offering is not me sort of sowing to increase. The first fruit offering is me participating in a kingdom law where God makes promises. You understand the difference? So if I'm sowing, if I'm sowing for something, I still have to use my faith. But when God tells me to do something and I will do this, it's a whole nother level of expectancy. It's not built on me being perfect or me being all those other things. It simply means I participated in something God told me to participate in. And now the honest is on him. Right. So and many people sowed out of their heart and out of their spirit. It was a challenge for a lot of us. It was a challenge. My last first fruit offering was a challenge. Amen. Uh, It was a challenge, not the offering on Sunday, but the other one, the big one. It was a challenge. But uh, and many of you have entered into that challenge. But when you enter into that challenge, you should have some expectation. Tell the person next to you, you should expect something. You should expect something. And I want to look I want to look at you in your face and tell you you should expect something. This is not something you did. It's not a religious thing. It's a kingdom thing. You participated in what God told you to do. And now you should have an expectation in your heart and in your spirit. Amen. Amen. In this list, there are I don't know that there are several. I'm going to mention them all, but there are several I want to read. Let's go to Proverbs. We'll start in, in the first one. Proverbs three. Proverbs three and nine. If you if you gave if you gave a first fruit offering and it was your best, just say hallelujah. Hallelujah. (laughs) Amen. Then we should have some expectations. I do. And I said on Sunday there was a a, there was a particular thing that I was expecting for my first fruit offering of last year that has not happened yet. But I am certain that it will. And until it does, I'm going to continue to sow. And I'm going to explain to you at the end of the service why I continue to sow. I continue to sow into that thing I'm expecting. And I'm going to keep sowing into it until I pass away if it doesn't happen. And then I'm going to teach my children to sow into it until it comes to pass. Okay. I'm not going to lose heart if I die and it doesn't come to pass. It's a big thing, but um, it's for us and our inheritance, right? Us, me, my family, and you. Because when my thing happens, it's going to bless everybody. Proverbs 3 and 9 Proverbs 3 and 9 says, honor the Lord with your wealth. So we honor him with wealth. We don't honor him with poverty. Don't let anybody talk you into that. You don't honor God with poverty, right? And with the first fruits of your crops, of your increase, then, number one, your barns will be filled to overflowing and your vats will brim over with new wine. Barns are a place where we store up. Barns are a place that we store up. And vats, vats are a place of our investments. Vats are investments. So God makes a promise here. If you honor me with first fruits, I'm going to cause you to have enough. To have enough to store up and save. In other words, no more living from paycheck to paycheck, hand to mouth, week to week. You are, you're in a whole nother level. And you should expect this. You should expect to be able to store up and save. You should expect that there will be times in your life where you don't have to balance the checkbook right away. You don't have to call and switch some money over right away after you buy something or take somebody out to eat or something. You know, you should you should expect to store up and save. There are two people in here tonight. Okay, you you, and if you don't have a savings account, I'm talking about a real savings account. I'm not talking about a transfer account where you transfer money out of into. I'm talking about a real savings account. If you don't have a real savings account, you need one. Okay, here's my point. If, 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 if I read all 18 of these and three or four others that I've found since I taught these to you, no matter what they are, your expectation should show up how? If you're expecting what we're talking about, what should happen? Huh? You, you become intentional. What does that mean, though? You do something, and if you're expecting, if you're expecting a baby, what do you do? You prepare. You, you, you know, people said, Liz James, oh, it's such a blessing you got pregnant. No, Liz has been pregnant for like since she got married. Liz, Liz had a room. 
She had like thousands of dollars of clothes. Y'all know Liz. Liz has been buying baby clothes since she was 16. So she's been, she's been expecting a baby. When she interviewed Jeff to be married to him, do you want kids? She knew she wanted kids. So this expectation, when you start to expect money, you get a savings account. And when you expect to have lots of it, you don't just have a savings account. You have an investment account. And when money is, this is like the Roach Motel. When money goes in, it does not come out. You don't touch it. You don't spend it. You don't do anything with it except invest. Okay? If you, if you listen, just because you gave a first fruit offering does not prove you have expectation. A lot of religious people give an offering. But they do not have an expectation. And I'm pretty, I'm pretty set on you have an expectation of God. And if anybody says that's erroneous, you know, we can give them a bunch of scriptures. But I'm teaching you, don't argue with silly people. Okay? And religious people are the most drunk people on the planet. They're drunk in their own religion. It's intoxicating. Okay? And they don't understand how the kingdom works. But you do. So if you're expecting to store up, you need a barn. And if you expect to invest, you need vats with rules. And everybody needs to know the rules for these vats. If you got an investment vat, you, you don't spend it on vacations. You don't spend it on clothes. You don't spend it on food. The only thing you do with it is invest. The only thing you do with it is invest in your future. Is that all right with you? Exodus 34. Making me work awful hard. <laughs> Exodus 34. Exodus 34, 24. Say it with me. When I expect something, I get ready for it. When I expect something, I get ready for it. So you, you have to get ready for this. Because these are promises God made. He made them. We didn't make them. We didn't ask him to make them. We didn't write the book. He wrote it, right? Okay, all right. Exodus 34, 24, right? Okay. All of these celebrations in the Bible... Uh, the, the 22nd verse celebrating the, the, the Feast of Weeks with the first fruits, the wheat harvest, the, fest, the, the Feast of Ingathering at the turn of the year, all of the, and then three times a year, these rules are written for people who were growing agriculturally, right? We don't necessarily grow agri agriculturally, and those who do grow agriculturally, they get money all the time, okay? So these three times a year, the seven feasts, we don't necessarily have to celebrate them unless they have kingdom significance. And about three of them do, but all the other seven do not, all right? So it says, three times a year, all of your men shall appear before me, uh, the sovereign Lord, the God of Israel. And I will listen, listen to what he says. Number one, if you, if you appear before me with your first fruit offering, I'm going to drive out nations before you. In other words... I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to drive out anything that is an obstacle to your increase. This is God's promise. God's promise is that I'm going to drive out obstacles or anything that oppose opposes or any opposition to your increase. I'm going to drive it out. Now, the only thing God can't drive out from your land is your thinking. OK, he, he can drive out opposition. But you have to change your own mind. Okay? You, you have to change your own mind. You've got to change your own thinking. So God's not going to come into your mind or your heart or your seed of thinking or your, your, um, your, your mode of operation, your, your, basic, um, your basic way of functioning. What are those words? Your modus operandi, your, 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 your mode of operation, your seed of reasoning, your, give me some, your mindset. He's not going to just come into your mind and drive, it's not even the devil, but drive out erroneous thinking. You're going to have to drive that out yourself. So that opposition, we're not, we're not talking about the opposition of your thinking. We're not talking about your concepts. 
You've got to change your own concepts by reading and studying the word. Right? So that's not what he's talking about. He's talking about any other opposition, things that are working against you, formed against you, duct taped against you, super glued against you, uh, bailing wired against you, chewing gummed against you, anything that's formed, manufactured, and put together against you, he's saying, I'm going to drive out that opposition. That's huge. That is huge. I'm, I'm going to, uh, uh, when, when we were sewing personally, and I don't know, six or so years ago, I'm losing count now, six or so years ago, we sewed, I don't know, 20 or so thousand dollars as first fruit from your church. We took it. The first offering of the year, we took that offering and sewed it into ministries around the world. Israel, uh, Jesse Duplan, I mean, we just, we took it and sewed it into the world. And our prayer was, God, hide this building for us. Now, how do you hide 16 acres on top of a hill from everybody else looking for buildings? And everybody was looking for buildings at the time. It was in the middle of the commercial height. Tire shops, manufacturing buildings, uh, telemarketing companies, everybody was looking for a building like this. But we were the only people negotiating for it. The week after we signed a contract, they got three offers. Okay, well, I'll teach you. It's up to you to believe it, all right? It's up to believe it. But, but I'm brainwashed. I'm brainwashed. I'm done with everything else. I don't even think. I don't even think outside of what I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm convinced. I'm a fanatic. You, you cannot convince me that this does not work. I'm living in a house my wife put a first fruit on. In the market for over a million. Hide it because we ain't, we're not paying that. This is all we're going to pay. God hid the house for three years. Y'all don't understand what I'm trying to say to you. Okay, anyway. Anyway, wh where was I at? I'm going to find somebody with faith and sit on their lap in a minute. <laughs> Amen. Okay. So I'm going to drive out nations before you. Next, I'm going to enlarge your territory. I'm going to expand your holdings. Whatever you do, whether it's land, works on contract, students in your schools, clients in your hair business, in your daycare. I mean, I don't know what you do. Okay. But whatever you do, he says, I'm going to move the borders. I'm going to expand the holdings. I'm going to pick up what you, I'm going to pick up your fence and I'm going to move your fences out. Oh, man, <laughs> that's crazy. Holler with me. I believe that. I mean, I mean you, you've, got to, you've got to release your faith. Sometimes in the evening, uh, uh, um, after being up early and working all day, my, my head gets tired. I don't know about you, but my head gets tired. My body's not tired. My head's tired. And uh, just about 10 minutes of a cat nap just, just turned me on. Just 10 minutes. And my wife is different. If she lays down for 10 minutes and wakes up, you know, it's hell on earth. It's not going to be good. So she's got to have a longer nap, right? But I can do 10 minutes. And I was getting my 10 minutes today. I'm telling you, it was as good as apple pie nuked in the microwave with ice cream on top. And the phone rang. And I said, I'm not going to answer it, not going to answer it. Just need 10 minutes. So I didn't answer it. 
So when I, when I picked up the voicemail, someone called me from California and they said, listen, we understand you've never preached in California. We got to have you. It's in two weeks. And I said, I can't come. Got an engagement. I called them back. Excited about going to California. Never been there. Great church. And I said, I can't come. And the lady said, I'm going to call the pastor back because we have to have you. We're going to move the date. So you, you give me your itinerary. Now, I hung up the phone and I'm like, I'm not sure I want to do this anyway because this is exposure at another level and the whole thing. And the Lord said, look, you gave a first fruit offering Sunday. <laughs> and I, you, you, you can't, because way down at the bottom of the list, maybe you've never read the bottom of the list. The bottom of the list says, God, when you give the first fruit, you have now given God the permission to set your boundaries. You can't set your own boundaries. You can't tell God it's enough students. You can't tell God that's enough contracts. You can't say to God that's enough houses. That's enough. You can't. Once you give the first fruit, he 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 says I'm I'm setting your boundaries. So I'll expand your land holdings. Where was I at? Um, so he starts giving them instructions. Uh, verse 25, so do not offer blood in the sacrifices to me, along with anything containing yeast. So no gluten in this. Bring the best to me in, in verse 26 of your soil. Do not cook. He's giving all these instructions to Moses about how to do this offering. But God says he'll expand. Now, I want to skip down a couple. Uh, wow. Exodus 34, we'll just read it. We won't read the scripture, but Exodus 34 and 24 also, you know, he'll take away the desire of your enemies to harm you. Second Kings 4 and 2, uh, 4 and 42. I have a correction in this one that I want to make sure you get. When I typed it up, there's something that makes this not quite right. I have, I have given you that God will cause there to be plenty for me in the kingdom of God. And the intent of 2 Kings 4 and 42 is that there will be a plenty in the kingdom, not necessarily for me. But when I give my first fruit offering, there's going to be plenty in the kingdom. In other words, when I give my first fruit offering, there's going to be enough for God to do what he wants to do in and through the church. Because there's a lot God wants to do in and through the church. Right. There's a lot he wants to do in and through the church that affects the community and the world. So you got that correction? Yes, sir. Next after that, God will place a supernatural blessing on what I have left. We've read that one before, uh, Romans 11 and 16. If the first fruit is holy, if the first fruit is holy, then the rest is holy. If the dough is holy, the whole lump is holy. So you can expect whatever you have left. After you give the first fruit, you're not missing out. God multiplies it. He stretches it. He does things with it, all right? Next, God will cause a blessing to rest on my whole house and everything associated with it. Ezekiel 44, 29. This is the expectation you should have. The expectation you should have is that whatever you do, the anointing of God, the blessing of God, the empowerment of God rests on your life. It rests there. And if you're not seeing evidence of that, you should still expect it. Right? I want to read this one. Exodus 23 and 20. Exodus 23 and 20. Okay, we, we probably need to go up to verse 19 or so that we can get the context. Okay, up to verse 19. The, const the context is bring the best of the first fruit. You see it? Okay. Bring the best of the first fruit of your soil to the house of the Lord your God. Do not cook a young goat in its mother's milk. See, I am sending an angel ahead of you to guard you along the way and to bring you to the place I have prepared. So God says that first fruit offering guarantees angelic escort. Angelic escort. You're being escorted to your next place, your next level by angels. Well, pastor, I don't feel like I got any angels around me. I feel like I'm dying. I feel like I'm being choked out. Well, you'd be dead if there was no angel. 
that's the point we should make. You'd not, you wouldn't just be tired and beat up. You'd be out of here. He would have taken you out. So that angelic escort protects you and takes you to the next level. You see that? Okay. Um, God will become, the next one is, God will become an enemy to your enemies. God will become an enemy to your enemies. The battles you've been fighting to protect your stuff, to protect where you're going, God will become an enemy. Verse 22 says, if you listen carefully to what he says and do, all that I say, I will be an enemy to your enemies and will oppose those who oppose you. So there it is right there in scripture. It's in black and white. I will be an enemy to your enemy. Now, you being someone's enemy is a big deal. But when when they got to deal with God, when they got to deal with God, their hands are full. Am I right? Their, Their hands are full. You don't really have any worries when God becomes their enemy. They become so occupied with the stuff God has in front of them that they can't even think about you. Amen. Enemy to your enemies. Next, God will empower my food and water to prosper. God will empower my food and my water to prosper. Exodus 23, 25. That's a good one to read. Good one to read. Worship the Lord your God. And his blessing will be on your food. His blessing, this is still under the first fruit mandate, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Honor him and his blessing will be on your food. His blessing will be on your food and your water. He will empower your food that when you eat it, it will do what it's assigned to do in your body. Yes, to nourish and to heal you. This is, this is uh, very important, obviously, right? To live, we have to stay connected to the ground because that's where our body came from. But there are people who eat food and the food does not nourish them. Okay. Next, he says, and I will take away sickness from among you. Lord, help us. So that's a promise of divine health. If you gave a first fruit offering, God has given you the promise of divine health. Next, anyone who suffered a miscarriage, whether naturally, spiritually, financially, relationally, God says if you have suffered that, your first fruit offering is a promise that even though you're barren and that you've miscarried, you will not miscarry. You will give birth to something. So many, how many, no matter how many you've had, God promises that he will cancel them. This is God's promise. This is not something I'm promising you or, or some preacher's promising you. This is in his word. And, and, and so we need to expect it. And we need to, we need to stand in front of God. I'm going to show you that in a minute. We need to stand in front of God boldly, not disrespectfully, but we should stand in front of him boldly and remind him of what he said. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. So I refuse to be barren if I have this promise. I'm not going to be barren. I'm not going to die barren. I will produce fruit. Okay. No one miscarrying be barren in your land. And I will give you a full lifespan. You ought to underline that. (laughs) Highlight that. (laughs) Live a long time. Not sick. (laughs) <laughs> live, a, live a long time and not be ill. Amen? Amen? All right. All right. All right. Okay. So where are we? Divine health. Next, God will cancel all forms of miscarriages. Read that. God will give you a full long life. Read that. God will cause those opposing me to be filled with dread and confusion. <laughs> Should we read that one? <laughs> Exodus 23, 27. <laughs> Uh, Let's see. Does it say it like that, man? I will send my terror ahead of you and throw into confusion every nation you encounter. I will make it to their advantage to leave you alone. (laughs) 
I will make it to their advantage right. to leave you alone. Yes, sir. You, you ever watch National Geographic and uh, some of these shows where you have like like uh, inexperienced hunters, like inexperienced snakes or inexperienced frogs or inexperienced uh, octopus or something in the ocean or in the trees that's never seen. They don't know the difference in the colors. You know, if, if it's uh, like like us in the country, they would teach us about snakes. Right. Y'all play with snakes up here. We don't do that in the south. We don't you know, y'all be playing with them. And no, 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 we don't do that in the south. Because we say it, it, any good, you know, the only good snake is a dead, is a dead one. We kill it because we got stuff down south that will bite you and you don't make it to the house. You know, you did. Y'all kids in the Midwest, y'all pick them up and play with them. Bless his name. So we say, we say, um, we say uh, 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 red and black friend of Jack, red and yellow kill the fella. You know, we put the we put those colors together and, you know, but most of us, that doesn't even matter. If you see one, you got to take it out. But on National Geographic, you'll see a young octopus is just learning to hunt and he will pick a lionfish and put it in its mouth. And all of a sudden you see it spit it out. Right. You'll see a snake attack a frog. It's the wrong colors. And he'll bite that bite that frog and all of a sudden spit it out. And the frog hops away. In other words, the snake has to learn. You don't want to mess with this one. We don't eat these. <laughs> you know, we leave these alone. And so as the snake gets older, it does it just you can you can put the same frog there and the snake just slithers right by. No, we don't touch that. Well, God says, I can make you like that, that those things that devour other people, I can make you a whole different type of species that people just people just don't want to mess with you. Pastor Strong said, you remember when Pastor Strong was here? He said of Sister Janice, lightning hit the car, right? So when they were at the Lexus dealer to buy a new car, the, man, the, the sales manager came out and said, stop negotiating with these people. Give her the car at her price because the lightning struck the last car. We don't want to mess with these people. <laughs> we don't want to mess with these people. Just give them what they want. And, and, and God can make you that kind of person. You are not threatening. But messing with you is not a good idea for them. Let's see, the last time we tried to mess with her, this is what happened. So why don't we just find somebody else to mess with? people will have dread. Opposition will have dread. Uh, let me tell you something about the devil. The devil is not powerful. And, and I know we, I, okay, we hear a lot about his power. He's not powerful. He is cunning. He's wise. Let me give you a description of the, of the enemy that I never heard till God told me and it helped me. The enemy, the devil, can be compared to water. He goes to the lowest places and the points of least resistance. I know that's deep. That's a book right there. Somebody smart enough ought to write it. He goes, he goes to the lowest places. Water goes to valleys and the paths of least resistance. The only thing you have to do to win over the enemy is elevate your mind. That's it. And he doesn't touch you. The Bible says there's a place in God where the, vul the vulture's eye cannot see. That's deeper than we're willing to go, right? So if you want to win again, okay. Good buddy, right? The good buddy, that's how you remember the scripture. Uh, you know, um, uh, Second Corinthians, uh, what is it, 4 and 10, 4, 10, good buddy, you remember that? 10, 4, right, thank you so much. <laughs> 10, 4, good buddy. <laughs> uh, the weapons of our, listen now, listen now, Paul's trying to give us a clue. Now, the weapons of our warfare, they are, they are mighty through God. 
to the pulling down. Now, listen, listen, these are the weapons. When people, I got invited to speak at a spiritual warfare conference. And so I called and asked, what does that mean to you, spiritual warfare? Well, this is what we mean. We're in a fight against the devil, and we need you to come and teach. We heard you, saw you on YouTube, da 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 I said, I can't come and, I don't teach that. I don't believe that. I don't believe we're fighting him. So I can't, I can't, I can't, thanks for the honorarium. It would be nice. <laughs> but I can't, I, I can't, I cannot talk about passionately what I do not believe. Okay, so I can't come and teach that. Now, I can come and teach what the Bible says, which is the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. It didn't say the pulling down of Satan. What are these strongholds? Put up, put up the next scripture. What, what are these strong? He, he tells us what we're fighting. On the contrary, they have divine power. What is that? You reading? Is that NIV? Why don't, let's, let's stay there, but let's go to another translation. Let's go to, um, can y'all stay in the King James Version? Okay, let's, let's see if we can do it. Now, I don't want to see no smoke coming out of your ears, though, right? <laughs> so go, go to the King James Version so we can read it like we're in Sunday school. <laughs> okay. To the pulling down of strongholds. Next verse. Now, now listen, here are the strongholds. This is Bible. What are the strongholds? Casting down. Arguments. What are they? They're arguments. Where do arguments happen? In your mind. Okay. And every high thing that exalts itself against the. See, it's, it's this fight against what you know. It's not, it's not some devil. He's not, he's not that sharp. Come on. He knows you are sharper than him. So he wants to use your mind against you. So he plants things. He, he, he allows people who are under his influence to set you up. Your boss. The person you were in a relationship with who doesn't love God like you do. So he's using them to set you up. And if he can set up enough of them, if he can set up enough people so you think you're in failure, you start to believe a lie about your own life. Somebody asked me the other day, how did that person guess that this a psychic was guessing and it was true? I said, absolutely it's true. The devil has a system that works. But she didn't know there are imps in other people who knew the secret, who was there, that passes the information on and because she's a medium. And because she's a medium, it passes down the line, and now she knows something about you. It's not supernatural. Back to the scripture, got distracted. <laughs> Back to the scripture. Okay, so every high thing, he ex he, 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 these are imaginations and high things that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. And doing what? Bringing into what? Not the devil. You, 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 cap, you capture your thoughts, not the devil. As soon as you capture your thoughts, the devil goes looking for another fool. He, he leaves you alone and goes to look the path of least resistance. He goes to find an ignorant person. He goes to look for someone who does not understand. Do you see it? My war is against my thinking. And I'm telling you, that is a bigger fight than the devil. Because I got some crazy stuff in my head. I got some crazy stuff I've been taught. I got some crazy, it cemented into my mind. What I learned in church, what I learned in the street, what I learned in university, what I, what I learned in the bathroom, in the locker room, underneath the bleachers, what I learned in life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on. So I have a full-time job trying to deal with this right here.
And when you say something that's true in the kingdom, but not true in my mind, see, now I got a problem with you. But my problem's not with you. My problem is what you said. No, that can't be true. Even if it's true. Now I have a war. And the people who go somewhere in God trade quick. They trade. They trade. They trade quick. Well, let me think about that. What's to think about? It's idiotic to think about something that's okay. It, it doesn't make sense to think about something when you know it's true. Right, 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 right. Let's finish the scripture. Go back to it. Don't distract me again up there in the booth. Okay. <laughs> Bringing into captivity every thought. To the obedience of Christ. That is our warfare. If you want to rid yourself of an enemy in your life, the devil himself, just elevate. Elevate the way you think. Get a revelation that's above him. And now he will look for other people who do not have a revelation. Don't make yourself easy pickings, paths of least resistance. <laughs> Is that too much? This, this is the way it happened. The devil came to tempt Jesus. Now, how is he going to leave you off the list? Okay. He, he came. I, I'm, 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 people like, I'm praying that I can, I can sort of avoid this. I'm like, what? Is, what? That, that's not the point. The point, the point is to not be tempted. The point is to be able to resist temptation. So the, the, the point is that when the enemy comes to you, is it going to be 40 days or 40 years? I mean, are you going to be in the wilderness with him 40 days? Or is it going to last your whole life? You can turn 40 days, you can turn 40 years into 40 days by simply saying, you know, it's written. Uh, you know, I ain't got nothing to do with this. It, it ain't my promise. I didn't write it. I didn't die for it. I'm not dying for it, but it's been written. And at the end of them days, the Bible says that Satan left him alone. Come on, Satan left him alone and the angels came and ministered to him ask your neighbor 40 days, 40 days of 40 years. 40 years same thing those same 40 days when you read 40 when you when you read 40 in the bible 40 for a 40 day journey turns into 40 years what 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 is it this 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 number 40 it's the time of exchange you've got to change yes, you've got to accept what's coming to you all right does that make sense at all so tell your neighbor elevate your mind we used to have a cheer when i was back in in high school y'all don't know nothing about y'all y'all cheerleaders today i was watching cheerleaders at one of my one of my one of my daughter's events last last fall i'm like oh man they don't cheer anymore it's about being cute now they're all cute back in my day cheerleaders sweat i mean they were work cheerleaders were working <laughs> cheerleaders don't work no more it's cute and they're all girly and and bunch of talking no cheerleaders were there to make the team better we had a cheer elevate your mind Get yourself together. At time out, them cheerleaders be working it, boy. <laughs> now, that's a cheer at a basketball game. Elevate your mind. Do you win games with your body or with your mind? With your mind. You win with your mind. You win with your thinking. Your, your, your body does what your brain tells it to do. But if your mind thinks poverty, your body has to go get it. If your mind thinks you're pretty, your body will react to that. And so will people. 
If your mind thinks you're ugly, your body has to act ugly, dress ugly, walk ugly, and give itself to anybody. But if your mind thinks wealth, even if you're living in a cardboard box on a corner of disaster (laughs) and failure, (laughs) you can't live there long because your mind doesn't live there. I'm not going to. What did I leave leave off? Oh, for, for, don't put your head. Okay, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Okay. God will cancel strategies and systems formed against me. Hallelujah. God will cause me to possess, um, uh, cause, cause my opposition to forget their offense against me. That's so good. God will deliver me by any means necessary. You know, where would you rather read that one? Put, put Exodus 23, Exodus 23, 28, and then I'm going to give you these little points and we can go home. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. I don't know if you're excited, but man, I'm kind of pumped myself. What did I say? Exodus 23, 28. You there? Exodus 23, 28. I will sin. (laughs) Okay, there it is. I put any means necessary because God says, I'll send the hornet ahead of you to drive out. <laughs> God says, look, by any means necessary, even if I have to send a pest, <laughs> even if I have to send a pest before you, by any means necessary, whatever I have to do, now that you've given me a first fruit, I am going to drive them out. Okay, now. Let me give you these last four points. It, it's, it's, it sounds like I'm changing gears, but I'm not. You need this. Deuteronomy 26 and 1. Deuteronomy 26 and 1. This one verse is so full. I'm just going to pick out four points out of this. You may have heard this, but you've not heard it from me. So you need to take notes. All right. Deuteronomy 26 and 1 says in the NIV, in the NIV, it says, when you have entered the land, the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance and have taken possession of it and settled in it, then take some of the first fruits. You there? After you have four things, I want you to underline in the scripture, four things, and you should do your own study of this. So God can reveal some things to you. The testimonies that we're getting in writing, you're just going to be so blessed when you see them on video. You're going to be so blessed. Okay. When you have entered the land, underline entered the land. Because your first fruit comes out of something. You have to understand that. Okay. When you have entered the land, the Lord your God has given you, underline as an inheritance, number two. It's in your notes. As an inheritance. Number three, and have underlined taken possession. Taken possession of it. And then number four, settled in it. You feel that in your toes, don't you? Okay, this is important. This is important. We're not visiting a land. You hear what I'm saying? We're not visiting a lifestyle. We're not pitching a tent. We're building a concrete house. So number one is what? Into the land. Into the land. Number two? Inheritance. Inheritance. Number three? Number four? Okay. Number one, enter the land. In the King James, it says come to. The King James says when you have come to the land. This impl- implication of coming to simply means to besiege it, as we would say, roll up on it. I mean, you're not just driving up to it. You're rolling up. I mean, you're like, here I am. 
this literally means to show up, to show up and behave like you belong there, even though you're not in it yet. It's, it's, it's like, uh, it's like, you know, the, the common language is roll up. Y'all know what roll up means? What does roll up mean? <laughs> see y'all, see y'all, you come on up on it. Come on up on it. Now that is so ebonic, and, but it works. Okay, so, so it's this, uh, you, 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 you're, not, you're, you're not just showing up at the house. You're showing up at the house like, okay, all right, right. So, so th- this whole thing, the first fruit offering, the first fruit offering the Lord reminded me to tell you this year, the first fruit offering is not the first. The first thing, that offering came out of something. Whether it was 10 cents or $10,000, that that first fruit offering came out of something. And it came out, and so now I have this attitude. Your attitude is behave like you belong there. You may be showing up on it, and somebody else may be living there. But you roll up. You know, you, you... you okay, okay, I can't think. When you show, like Joshua and them at Jericho, when they showed up, they just surrounded the city. Like, you know, you come easy, you come hard, but you coming. Okay, so God says, when you have, when you have entered it. So in other words, when you have behaved like you belong there. When you have, you, be, you start acting like. I'm not visiting. You, the the spirit may have it, but it is mine. Today or tomorrow, it comes into my possession in earnest. But I own it now. The education, the job, the business, the relation, I mean, whatever it is that, that you're looking at. Number two, your attitude has to be this. Realize that it's a prepaid possession. Okay, here's the, here's the secret to many people I know their success. They never told me this, I just watched them. Okay, I, when, 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 when Brother Jesse invited me to Destrahan, Louisiana, to sit with him, and to sit in the room with him, Gloria and Kenneth Copeland, I mean, when you sit in the room with them, you sit like this. You know, and they're like, how are you? Fine. I mean, you know, you know, I mean, they, 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 you know these people, they're like, they're imposing. Yeah. I, I don't know what you mean. They, I, I don't know if you know what I mean. They're like, uh, oh, you know, don't, don't say nothing wrong. Don't, you know, don't, you know, just, just sit there. Don't, you know, be a fly on the wall. But Jesse don't do that. Jesse puts you right in the middle of them. Hey, Martin, say hello. This is, you know, this is, this is Kathy. You met Kathy? This is Kathy. You know, it's like, hey, you know, hey, Mrs. Duplantis, how are you doing? But, but it's like, these people are imposing. And while I was sitting there, the Lord said, you ought to act like you belong in this room. Come on, Pastor. <laughs> you know, you can get scared out of stuff. And the people you're afraid of are so natural. They don't see you as their competition. They just want to help you. Because they have realized there's enough for all of us. So Miss Gloria Copeland, it's so wonderful to meet you, Linnell. I mean, it's like these people are so beautiful and genuine, but I watch them in this room. You watch Jesse and Kathy. It don't take you long. These people, when they go to do something, they don't believe they're coming representing themselves. Come on, That's not how they think. When they show up to do something, they, they don't, be, let me cut to it. They believe when they go at it that it's already theirs. In other words, Okay, if, uh, if your grandfather, okay, okay, here we go, Cuba. Have you realized what's going on in Cuba? Okay, Fidel Castro, you, you can't keep people in your grasp forever. Eventually they get free. So Mr. Fidel, 
out of the picture. His brother's not a real leader, right? So, 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 so the people are taking over. Yeah. So now the exiled Cubans from all over the world, right. including Miami, yes. when the Pope went over, they said, oh, shoot, it's time. Yeah. They, the planes leaving Miami, going to Cuba. <laughs> Crazy. And this is what these Cubans have. They have title deeds to the land Fidel took from them. So these people are rolling up on Cuba. You, read, just, just blog it. They're showing up with, I know your factory is here. <laughs> but 50 years ago, yes, sir. Yes, sir. my daddy owned this land and it was a tobacco farm. Now, Cuba has to deal with this. And eventually, mark my words, the international community is going to get involved. Because now they're showing up like it is an inheritance. They're not showing up like they're begging. The Hawaiians did the same thing. Be careful, America. The Indians might pull themselves together. I'm just saying. The Native Americans might show up and say, -hoo -hoo -hoo. you know what? They might show up and, and they might show up with hypostasis, title deed. I'm talking about war path. I'm talking about serious. Someone said to me the other day, they're just getting in the dumbest thing. Dumbest thing. And I'm like, my brother, preacher, you don't understand what you're saying. Well, they have Indian money. They get all this money, millions and millions of dollars from the government. And I'm like, um, that's true. So he's talking, and I'm like, it's hundreds of millions every year. They can put casinos wherever they want. He says, it's not right. I said, uh, <laughs> okay, now, uh, let's just think. That is penance. That is minuscule. That is sheep. They owned it all. Never looked at it like that. You better recognize. Because cause some, because some, because I'm telling you right now, because some people, you, you, you watch me what I'm saying to you. Some people, okay, okay. can I go there on the internet? Is it not right for the man who built the White House to live in it? That's right. That's right. Is it not right for the slave who built the, the fireplace to sit around it and read her daughter stories? Don't mess with me. Okay, I'll, I'll back up off that. <laughs> okay. okay. But, but, you, but you have to realize, number two, you, you have to realize this is an inheritance. It is mine when I step up on it. It's an heirloom. It's an estate. It is my portion. It is my heritage. It is my inheritance. It is my possession to have. So when I show up to this thing, I don't know what yours is. I can only talk about mine. But when I, here's the secret. When I show up to it, I act like it's mine. I walk in it like it's mine. They messed around and gave me the key to this thing and didn't ask for it. Well, I, I set it up where they didn't ask for it. Did I manipulate them? You can call it what you want. I wanted the key. I wanted to know what the alarm codes were because I came here three, four times a day and walked in it. I, 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 don't, I couldn't tell you where it is right now, but I took naps in the room. I took naps in the Walmart. I slept here. The house we bought, I left. Yes, I did. A door opened. I got to get back in this thing when nobody is here. Oh. I got to walk in this. Okay, y'all like, Pastor, the loss is mine. No, I'm rolling up on it. 
I mean, when, when, I, when, I, when, when I show up on it, it's, you know, it's got to come to me. Touch your neighbor. Just give him a high five and say, be strong. Be, strong. be, courageous. be courageous. Because the Lord your God is with you. You're not, you're not asking, you're not asking, you're not asking for, okay, you're not asking the universe for something that was not yours originally. Is, is that, I'm not demanding dominion over my life. that I never had. I'm simply demanding restoration. Restoration. Oh, my God. Not restitution. Come on. You can't pay me for slavery. <laughs> you can restore me. You can't pay for blood. Takes blood to pay for blood. Three, so many distractions. <laughs> so number one, behave like you belong there. Number two, realize it's a prepaid possession. Jesus paid for this. Number three, the word is possess it. When you have possessed it. Possess it means to occupy by driving out previous tenants. That's the biblical definition. When you possess it, you have driven out previous tenants. And you're possessing their place. You've seized their place. You've expelled them. You've impoverished them. You've set them to ruin and pushed them out of your place. We're not talking about people, right? We're talking about spiritual possession. So number three in my words is treat your enemies like trespassers. Be ruthless. <laughs> Treat your enemies like trespassers, interlopers. Be fierce, uncompromising with the enemies in your head. You're trying to make, you're trying to break the, 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 the hundred thousand dollar mark, your net worth of a hundred thousand. Be ruthless. You're trying to break the half million dollar mark. Be ruthless. You're trying to get out of debt. Be ruthless with that enemy called debt. Be ruthless. Don't play with it. Don't, it's not a, this is not a game. You're trying to make the million dollar mark. Be ruthless about this. If you're going to do it, go after it. Yes, sir. If you want to win a contest, get in the contest. And when you go, you don't take your self-esteem. They ain't got nothing about, this ain't, oh, Lord. No, oh, this ain't got nothing to do with self-esteem. Don't care how you feel about yourself. This is not about you. Right, 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 right. Come on, Pastor. <laughs> you take. Treat your enemies like Trespassers, don't treat your enemies like they belong there and you're begging for them to leave. You know, could you leave my land, please? It would be nice if you just kindly left my land. It would, you know, I would appreciate it if you would just stop harassing my children. In the name of Jesus, I just, I just, I just pray, you know, just, just stop bothering my children at night with nightmares. That's not what you would do. <laughs> that is not what you would do. If your kids are waking up every night with nightmares and seeing demons and stuff like that, no. Mm -mm. It may not be the first night, but by the third night, what, what, you, what you doing, Crystal, on the third night? Huh? What you, do, what you doing on the third night or the second night? What you doing, huh? What you doing? You walk in that room. You got five gallons of oil. Loaded in a bazooka water gun. 
You got night vision goggles on. <laughs> right, I mean, it's warfare if, they, if, if something's messing with your kids. 